What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and tonight what I have for you guys is some pretty exciting breaking news about the next big update for Black Ops Cold War. So if you're one of those people that thought the February 4th update didn't have too much content, definitely stick around throughout this video because earlier today, Treyarch confirmed some pretty shocking announcements regarding the next big mode in multiplayer, the Easter Egg in Firebase Z, some new bundles, playlists, and even a surprise reveal about Dead Ops Arcade 3, which I really didn't expect. Definitely stay tuned, but before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and also be sure to use code dynamite if you want to save 10% on any control freak orders their link is of course down below in the description but i have to be honest with you guys i have about 12 videos written down in plan from now until next monday there's a lot of content coming to both black ops holder and my channel which i'm definitely ready for hopefully you guys are excited but earlier today it was a big surprise by the entire zombies community when it was confirmed that the main easter egg on firebase z is going to be locked for over 30 hours yes trailer confirmed that the next black ops cold war content update with all this new content is going to go live at 11 p.m pacific february 3rd which is also 2 a.m eastern february 4th and 7 a.m gmt february 4th this update will include immediate access to firebase z express new modes and playlists four additional prop hunt maps and much more so lots of surprises are of course in store for us with the last big update of season one reloaded that's of course expected but they followed up with the following tweet the main easter egg in firebase z will be disabled at launch until 9 a.m pacific which is 12 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. GMT, Friday, February 5th, to make sure everybody can start the hunt on equal footing. I will say this is maybe subject to change. What if it was a mistake and they meant, you know, seven hours after the launch of the map is when the Easter egg can go live. Maybe it's supposed to be 9 a.m. Pacific on February the 4th, right? So about five to seven hours after the launch of the map itself. That's what I thought, but if that's not the case, then yeah, we're gonna wait 30 hours for the main Easter egg to go live in Firebase Z. And here's what I'll say about that. So for years now, I've been saying the following, right? Whenever a new map comes out, people really don't focus on the map itself. They just hunt the Easter egg straight away, try to get the cutscene and then once the easter egg is solved a lot of people just throw the map in the garbage and wait for the next map people don't really absorb the atmosphere and energy of a new map they don't hunt the side easter eggs the radio ciphers learn the map layout they just get straight into the hunt which i get you know some people just want to do some people just want a new zombies map to hunt an easter egg on and that's totally fine but this could be the first and last time Treyarch tries this maybe this is a one-time experiment to see how the community reacts to locking the easter egg for that long i can get locking the easter egg for that long during like a game's launch but for a DLC, it's a bit unusual, I have to admit, but let's see how it works out. This really does benefit people who want to just really learn the map, maybe get some guides out, and just enjoy their time peacefully before jumping into a stressful Easter egg hunt. So it does benefit people more than it doesn't benefit people, I'll put it that way. But along with that as well, it was confirmed that to celebrate the continuation of Season 1 Reloaded, Double XP will be live in Black Ops Cold War and Warzone on all platforms starting at 10 a.m. on February 5th through February the 8th, with PlayStation operators receiving another full day of double xp on february the 4th as well so of course an extra benefit of playing on playstation but please let me know in the comment section try to argue this with me right name a content update in any call of duty that is bigger than season one of black ops cold war look at the start of season one and look at where it's ending right here look at all of that content from both roadmaps combined and please tell me that another call of duty has had a bigger content drop than this you can't name one it really doesn't exist but you know what everybody's entitled to their own opinion so just be respectful down below in the comments but when it comes to brand new bundles, it was confirmed that this week, the store is getting restocked with the Zombies Dozer Bundle, which features the legendary belligerent skin that decks Bulldozer out in a crimson mask and armor set. We saw this in the Season 1 Reloaded Roadmap. It looks amazing. It also includes the legendary Blood Dozer SMG and the epic Blood Spray Assault Rifle Weapon Blueprints. Both blueprints pack a punch with faster speed, better accuracy, and more ammo than their base weapons. So this almost sounds pay to win, but like I said before, you can use the same attachments on these blueprints prints on the base versions of these weapons so it of course feel pay to win but it really won't be now it does look like unfortunately that really nice mastercraft we saw in the season one reloaded roadmap isn't an actual mastercraft it is indeed the wonder weapon on firebase z we already knew that but i thought there was still a chance they can maybe make a cool mastercraft that looks exactly like the wonder weapon but for maybe an ak-47 that probably isn't going to be happening at least not right now but we also have another bundle coming to the store which is known as the garcia centric scar tissue bundle it includes 
includes the legendary Hatchet Man skin, decking out the Warsaw Pact Operator in a silky smooth vest and tie combo. The skin will also pair well with the bundle's Blood Money Legendary SMG, which includes a 45 round barrel drum for lots of ammos, a Hawksmoor optic, steady aim laser for higher accuracy, and a sound suppressor to take your enemies by surprise. There's also the legendary Tightrope Finishing Move, an epic Aqua Mariner Watch, Headhunter Sticker, Badge of Terror Emblem, and a Fire at Will Calling Card. So these bundles sound amazing. I can't wait to see how they look in game, of course. I'll probably just cop the Zombies one. It sounds really cool, but probably won't get the Garcia one. Let's just wait and see. But then we got an announcement regarding Endurance. So this took me by surprise. I mean, they might have announced this a couple of months ago and I just forgot about it. But as they said, following this season's Tactical Duels variation of Fire Team, Black Ops Cold War's biggest game mode is about to take the 10 team experience to a whole new level. In Endurance, 10 squads of four will drop into Alpine, Ruka, and Sanatorium to collect uranium and armed bombs throughout the match. We already have that in regular fire team. However, every time a bomb is detonated, a new one will spawn at a new location to replace it instantly, ensuring that there will always be five bombs available for all 40 players to compete over. The score limit will also be doubled from 500 to 1,000, making this perfect for completing multiplayer challenges. So jump in with your squad and experience the game's most detailed maps in an entirely new way. Like I've been saying, for those that are hating on fire team, if you played it extensively and you don't like it, okay, fine. But if you haven't played it with a full squad who have mics on, open communication, please try that because Fireteam is seriously one of the bigger highlights of Black Ops Cold War. It really does show some of Treyarch's best level design that they've done for the entire Black Ops series. That's just how I feel about that. But also a follow-up to the poll that I did yesterday on my community tab, I was asking you guys, what is the best mode in Call of Duty right now amongst the big modes? The big modes that play on massive maps, you know, Verdansk, Rebirth Island, Fireteam. People were immediately commenting, we're zombies, we're zombies. And I'm like, it isn't a zombies poll and it also is just referring to the massive modes that are in Call of Duty, right? I could have even included Ground War for Modern Warfare. I wasn't talking about zombies or 6v6 multiplayer. I was just talking about the bigger mode, so please relax about that poll. It wasn't that serious, but there were lots of people freaking out that zombies wasn't on that list, and I'm like, relax, it's not that big of a deal. But also when it comes to Express in Black Ops Cold War, as they officially said, first introduced in Black Ops 2, Express is a fast-paced 6v6 map that takes place on a modern bullet train railway in Los Angeles, with players fighting in the terminal, on the train station platform, and across the tracks themselves. Express is of course free in Black Ops Cold War, that comes with the Express 24-7 playlist with a collection of game modes including TDM, Kill Confirm, Domination, and even Hard Points. Like I said before with Raid, it threw me off by surprise that they're incorporating Black Ops 2 remasters in Black Ops Cold War, and the reason why is not just because those maps take place in the future, but it's because like I said before, there are lots of Black Ops 1 DLC multiplayer maps that take place during the Cold War, which have never been remastered one time, that would fit perfectly in this game. Game. Maybe we'll get a few of those in the future because it would probably be most of people's first times even trying those maps out. Not a lot of people have played a lot of the Black Ops 1 DLC multiplayer maps. It's also been 10 years, so the community has changed drastically. So those would be better maps to pick for remasters. But hey, you know what? They're really ticking the nostalgia meter for these Black Ops 2 remasters, so I guess it's fine. And with Raid, there is a continuity error with the fact that Raid is in 2025. However, they made some adjustments to the maps in Black Ops Cold War where some of the cars that were in the garages were changed to some old school cars from the 80s to make it feel like the map fits in Black Ops Colder's time era, so that's fine, but along with that on Express, I'm sure they'll also make some changes that make the map feel like it fits in this game, but let's just wait and see. And now when it comes to the zombie side of things, so nothing new was revealed about the map itself in the weekly blog post, however, we did get a tweet earlier from Treyarch regarding the energy of the future. So we got some blueprint teasers for the Omega Portal Chamber, Teleportation Prototype, and even the Ether Reactor, which we all got a glimpse of in the teaser trailer a couple of days ago, but what I will say, if you guys are interested in more Dark Ether lore, I'll have this tweet linked down below because there's quite a bit of writing on all these blueprints, which you might find interesting. Now, what I'll also say is the intro cutscene for Firebase could end up dropping tomorrow or Wednesday at any given time. They might end up not dropping the intro at all on their YouTube channels. They might wait for us to react to it together when the map actually releases on Thursday. That could be how they approach things this time. But what I will say is that I care more about the budget going into the gameplay and Easter egg on the map versus the budget going to an intro or outro cutscene. So, 
All I'm saying is I won't be disappointed if we don't get, you know, a fancy intro or outro cutscene. I'm looking forward to the map itself, but I do think we got a glimpse of the intro itself in the gameplay trailer the other day, since some parts of it did seem cinematic with Samantha lurking around Vietnam, looking at the Ether portal. Maybe that was, you know, a small look at the actual intro that we're going to get in a couple of days, but we'll just have to wait and see. Now, we did get more information about Tombstone in the weekly blog post, though, so I'll go ahead and read that. It says, This time, the Tombstone soda perk will be a bit different. Players will be turned into shadows after they've downed, which will allow them to explore the Dark Ether while trying to revive themselves. But if you die in this shadow form, you're dead for good. Better make your time in the shadows count. So, I'm curious if there are any Easter egg steps tied to this perk. Maybe just on Firebase Z, because the perk will have a machine on this map. Definitely a possibility with that. Similar to how anywhere but here, the free Gobble Gum was needed for the Zetsu Bonoshima Easter Egg back during Black Ops 3. So maybe they'll be creative with it. I'm looking forward to how the perk actually works in this game. But you can also use Tombstone on the Machina through the Wonderfizz machine. Definitely don't forget that. Now this is one of the biggest announcements that I definitely didn't expect Treyarch to reveal earlier. As they said, also coming to Zombies on February 4th is the brand new Dead Ops Arcade Solo Advanced Start. Players get an advanced starting position based on the highest round achieved in Dead Ops Arcade 3 solo. While stats, leaderboards, and challenges are disabled, the Reunited with Fidelina achievement can be completed in this mode, giving players a leg up on one of the game's toughest achievements. So, you heard that right. If you don't have the achievement for beating Dead Ops Arcade 3, then on solo you have this new mode which allows you to get it pretty easily. So, let's say you get to a round or two before the ending boss fight and you die, you can start back up again on that round with this mode and get the achievement unlocked. Now, I don't think the Dark Ops challenges will work as it says, and stats are of course disabled, which I don't think matters, but if you're looking for that Platinum in Black Ops Cold War and you want to play on solo, this is the mode for you. So, my guide that I made a little while back will still be helpful regardless of this mode being added in. I mean, the guide itself does go through every aspect of Dead Ops K3. It's one of the few guides on YouTube, actually. It might be one of, like, two or three. And it goes through the Room of Fate, the dungeons, the keys, the loot, how to beat the bosses. It goes through everything. But I am going to make a follow-up video to that one once this mode gets added in because this is huge news. And there have been a couple of things that got added into Dead Ops 3 over the last few months. And Dead Ops 3 is the first iteration of Dead Ops to get post-launch updates. So there are a couple more things that I want to address that might help you out a little bit more with being the mode. If you haven't tried the mode out just yet, please give it a shot because it features so much gameplay innovation that the first two Dead Ops did not have in Black Ops 1 or 2. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave all your thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on this massive update coming on February the 4th? And also, please tell me which content update is bigger than Season 1 of Black Ops Cold War. There is so much content being added to the game, and it's still the first season of this DLC season, right? Season 2 may end up starting on February 24th, just 20 days after this big update drops, which is very damn fascinating. But really hope you've enjoyed. Leave all your thoughts down below, and peace out, everyone. Uh -huh.